Hey, today's video is about napkins. This is a project launched by Hassan um, Nutlope on GitHub. So I'm gonna take a look over here. This is the project itself. Let's do a quick refresh of the page. When you get to napkins.dev, it basically turns your wireframe into an app. So you upload a screenshot over here, then choose the model you want, like Llama 3.290B Vision, and then we generate it. So let's use the example they already have set up. Click generate and see what it goes and does. In this video, I'm going to take a deep dive into the code behind the project, but before we do that, I want to see how it actually works so it'll be easier to understand what code we're looking at. And here we go. This wireframe on the right was turned into this UI over here, and then on the left here, we can see the code. If we want, we can also upload our own screenshot. So I've gone and created one over here in TL Draw. So let's upload that. Let's see what it does for this. And it's gone and built it, and as you can see, <laughs> it's got top nav task 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 and then email it so it did quite explicitly what it saw in the image so based on that you really have to like define your wireframe quite well it can't be a high level like this but overall yeah it did a pretty good job and in the example it does even better the ui doesn't look super pretty but i'm sure this could be improved over time but the concept that we're going to understand here is how we took this image and turn it into code. So jumping into the GitHub, the tech stack that we're using uses Llama 3.1, 405 billion parameter model from Meta for the LLM, and then 3.2 vision for the, I guess the vision part of it. Together I AI for LEM inference. So this is a company that Hassan works for. And so he's doing a demo for them, but here you can read about together, inference on leading open source models, fine tune with your own private data, deploy scalable AI applications, take a look at them. For the code sandbox, we're using Sandpack. So let's take a look at that. This is a run any JavaScript and Node.js app in any browser powered by code sandbox. So that's really cool. And that basically gives us this on the left, which is exactly what we had in the demo. And then here we can see some other files. So that's very nice. So here you can sort of see on the left the code and on the right uh, how it's displayed and then an opening code sandbox. Uh, I guess it's probably this code on the right, which is sort of the real magic of Sandpack. Like instead of Monaco, where it's just the code editor, but here we actually have um, this whole component is basically, yeah, here you can see open sandbox. Here we have the code and then on the right, we have the, it's displayed in the UI. So that's really cool. We're using S3 for storage, Next.js with Tailwind, Helicone for observability. So here you can see what Helicone does, but it gives us all these charts and things. And for example, let's say we're doing these open AI requests then you'll be able to see, okay, this request a cough a second, this is what our cost is and so on. So a very helpful tool, which I've played with a bit in the past, which can help you uh, get better insight into your app. So diving into the code base, uh, running it, by the way, it looks pretty simple. I haven't done it, but git clone, set up the .n file, and then basically npm install and run it. The code itself, we can see we're using Next.js app router. Uh, we're using ShadCN. So let's take a look at the app. It seems pretty simple. I think it's just one page, the entire app. So that makes it uh, really nice to learn from. Here you can see where we were choosing the different model. That's basically the state for this over here. A bunch of state management, um, the ability to upload to S3. This uses next S3 upload. The fastest way to upload files from a Next.js app to S3. 7,000 weekly downloads published a year ago. So not a super popular library. I'd actually myself stay away from something like this on my own project but good to know about. Continuing where we left off. So this is how we upload, um, handle change file and so on. Create the app. So this is the code we use to uh, generate. Well, this is the API endpoint. So API generate code, we'll have to take a look at that soon. See set status created, handle sample image. So the sample image we saw, this is where that's stored. So if we just open this, we'll see the sample image that was used. That's a really nice touch from a UX perspective. So you don't have to go and you know, if I want to try it out, I didn't have to go and create my own image, even though I did create my own wireframe. Here we can see the code. So the first time we come to the site, turn your wireframe into an app. So we see that over here. That's great. And in the future, that will convert into this. So let's see how that happens. So yeah, if status is initial or uploading or uploaded, we'll show that. But otherwise, uh, we're going to use animate presence. So this is from uh, motion. Yeah, we can see motion over here, but that's basically uh, when it's presented onto the screen, it's going to have a bit of an animation. Oh, so this is the important part, the code viewer. Code viewer, where does this come from? This comes from components code viewer. So let's take a look at that quickly. Code viewer.tsx. Here you can see we're using code sandbox uh, react basically, sandpack react, and that's just gonna go and show the editor uh, where the code is displayed. Here you can see the config. Um, we have react.ts and we can see all these different dependencies that we have. 
So I'm actually curious how this is used. Um, because I don't see it in the UI over here. Ah, I get it now. So when we go and import, let's say, components UI text area, so how is it going to be able to render that? Because how does it know what text area is? And then text area is going to rely on Radix UI. So here are all the dependencies we basically rely on. So that's really, really cool uh, how much Code Sandbox is able to do. Here you can see the other dependencies and so on. And while we're here, um, you'll see this is ddent. So there's just some HTML here. But what ddent does is basically removes all of these uh, pieces at the beginning. So you can write like regular strings, but they come out normal. So if we take a look here at the example, you might write something like this, but instead of these like huge breaks coming at the beginning, um, when it's actually output, it looks normal. And here's another example, leading and trailing lines will be trimmed and so on. And again, when it's output, it looks like this. So a lot of that empty white space is removed. So continuing, I mean, we mentioned we have this animate presence from Frame of Motion. Um, yeah, then we have the file uploader. I'm not gonna dive into this too much. Um, but yeah, that's basically the UI here. You can see tooltip provider and so on. So now let's go and take a look at the API. So there are basically two API endpoints, generate code and then S3 upload. So two different routes. Here you can see Helicone can be used. And if you use Helicone, it's basically going to pipe everything through Helicone to be able to basically uh, keep track of your metrics that we saw before, like how long it's taking and how long it's costing, how much it's costing you. In terms of the post request, we're setting up together, like together AI basically, and then we can pass in the model we want. So here are the different options we'd be passing in. And then the together library will be doing, let's say, a chat completion. So we'll set the model in our case, it will be, let's say, Llama uh, 3.2 vision and, you know, the other pieces we want. And here we have the image itself. So we're getting the image URL that's being passed into us. I guess we first uploaded it to S3 and then we can pass in the image URL once it's uploaded. And over here we get uh, description prompt and the description prompt is down here um, but yeah describe the attached screenshot in detail I will send you what uh, anyway whatever it will just like keep going on um, and <laughs> it's giving all the bullet points is uh, the system prompt and so on this is also passing in the shad cn docs to help it um, with pre-styled components so let's see how it does that so in terms of shad cn docs you can see here, we're basically passing in each component. We've got a name for each component. How the import is done is over here. And then the usage instructions. So let's go to the Shazzy and Docs in, um, import. Here you'll see um, the different docs. So he's basically copied this in. You'll see uh, these are the components we can use, button, avatar, card. Let's say we go to button, um, you'll see the usage examples. And I believe this is just taken from the Shazzy and repo. Or maybe he actually went and just rewrote it himself for easy usage but either way now you pass in this like how to import how to use it and so on so the ai can now go and use this when it's generating the code also tell it we don't have any other libraries like zord and hook form so it doesn't try to use code it can't and then also over here here are some examples of good outputs so again showing uh the ai how to do this and here are the different examples there's only one example over here um, but you can see the input UI mockup is a website designed for an AI tool and so on. And then over here, the output for that prompt is uh, this landing page, which is some React Tailwind code. And so you can see each of those examples is mapped over here. We have the example block, then we have the input, the text that is put in, and then the output code, basically. So once we have all of that, we're basically going to go and um, create the code based on the specified image we're going to pass it back to the front end and we're basically streaming the response back to the front end so that it could show up in real time as the code is being generated. And then the last API route is S3 upload and all you do for that is import post for our next S3 upload route. So that's really nice, nothing to configure over here. I'll quickly take a look at the layout. If there's anything interesting in here, we see some metadata, different fonts we're using. We're using plausible for analytics, so that's been added. Um, I mean, a footer and so on. I don't see anything super interesting in here. But yeah, that's basically the app. Almost all the logic is like sort of within page and then the generate code API route. Um, here we have the Shad CN components. This is the like a shimmer button that they added themselves. Here we have some other components, uh, the CSS for the code viewer, um, the docs that we mentioned for like Shad CN. But yeah, that's basically the entire project. Um, Hopefully that helped you understand it better and how you would go and build it yourself. Again, we have the code on the left. 
we have the uh, UI displayed on the right, which is from the um, Code Sandbox library, basically. And over here, we have the upload panel where you can choose your model, an example, and click generate app to make everything happen. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel. Also, give me a star for Inbox Zero on GitHub. Link is in the description below. Thank you.